Now, if we spend enough time together, one thing that you will probably come to learn about me, one thing that will probably come up in our conversation is the fact that I love sports, particularly basketball. I played basketball all growing up. And part of my experience of being on a team that I remember so vividly is the coaching, is being coached. Now, I love my coaches. I want to say that for the record. I love them dearly. But one thing that always was a point of tension for me was when we would be in practice and they would be coaching, also known as possibly yelling, raising their voices, getting a little loud. Maybe a clipboard was thrown down. Who's to say? But things could get intense in that gym. Tensions could run high. But at the end of every single practice, without fail, our coaches, in one way or another, reminded us how loved we each were, how valued we each were, and how each of us were an integral part to our basketball team. Now we did have to get it together on the free throw line, But what we really had to do was consider ourselves as part of a team. They would harp on the technical intricacies of plays, talk about things that we could fix pretty easily. But what they spent the most time talking about was how we had to have each other's backs no matter what, if we wanted anything to work. Because we were a unit, we were a family. We were a community. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This was difficult at times. There were times when I felt like we were living in this oxymoron or confused world. Because weren't they just really mad at me because I did not make a sharp enough cut to the basket? And didn't they just tell us all to take off and run multiple Churchills because we didn't communicate as a team? But now, now we're talking about value and love. This tension was, and it continues to be an important lesson for me. Now our coaches knew us so well. They knew how each of us responded, how they could encourage one another. They knew how we operated together and apart. They didn't do this whole coaching gig because they wanted to thrive and succeed themselves. There was multiple other paths besides being the coaches of a high school girls basketball team. And they didn't do it because they wanted to win the state tournament. They did it all because they loved us and they wanted us together to thrive. They wanted us together to succeed. They wanted us to learn the importance of community and of teamwork and win the state tournament. But that's besides the point. See, when we're a part of communities, when we're a part of teams, there's a lot of beauty that happens. I played ball with the same girls from elementary school to high school. We knew each other. We were able to be there and still are there for the most exquisite parts of life. And how great is that? But we're also able to be there through the toughest moments. And then in life together, in the middle of all that, there are these points that even when we love each other as much as we do, tension arises when we're frustrated and we use our knowledge of one another to get under each other's skins or maybe even hurt one another. I want you to think of your people. You know what makes them, you know what makes them a little upset. You know how to push their buttons. You also know how to love them. And so when I read the scripture for this week, our scripture of 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 14, my first thought admittedly was, okay, what's happening here? 
this all sounds awfully nice and tidy, maybe a little too nice and tidy. Don't get me wrong, we can always get things from a few, you know, a few verses of scripture, but I had questions about this one. Something else was happening. Maybe it was my inquisitive nature, but I knew there was more to the story than this blessing. So let's read the ending of Paul's letter again together. It says this, finally, brothers and sisters, goodbye. Put things in order, respond to my encouragement, be in harmony with each other and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Say hello to each other with a holy kiss. All of God's people say hello to you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Okay, so Paul is saying goodbye. The Corinthians will live in harmony. God's love goes before them, the whole nine yards, easy. We could figure this out, right? I'm sure what happened was that the Corinthians received this letter from Paul and they went to work and then everything was perfect, right? Probably not. So while my initial reaction was to think that Paul is putting this nice tidy bow on the letter, this beautiful conclusion of blessing and peace, I started to realize that it really wasn't so neat and tidy. See, Paul is communicating with his people This is his community that he is a part of. These are his friends, his church. The Corinthians are experiencing deep divisions. They're frustrated. They're searching for harmony. One group thinks they're right. Another group thinks they're right. And then another group thinks they're right. This all probably sounds a little familiar. Paul and the Corinthians are in relationship with one another. They know each other like the back of their hands. The Corinthians have said some hurtful, pointed things at Paul, and he's coming back with some defense. Things are tense in this letter. We can see it when we read 2 Corinthians. They know what frustrates each other. They know what encourages one another. Paul is sharing his heart in 2 Corinthians. He's making a plea for maturity, for unity, for peace, encouragement. They're wading in the waters of confusion and doubt, annoyance, all of it. This is an emotional letter. These are his people. This is hard stuff. But what Paul does is he continuously points back to God's reconciling work in Christ. He's communicating to his beloved community and to us in our beloved communities today that as the people of God, we are called into relationship. We are called into love and we cannot remain both faithful and unreconciled. As Paul lays out some things that have happened within his relationship with the Corinthians, he outlines the work he's done with them. He says that he's shown great endurance. There have been sleepless nights and he's saying, this is what I've been through. This is what I'm feeling and this is where I'm at. He's vulnerable, he's honest, and he's letting him know that he is struggling. That's hard. But at the end though, what our scripture today tells us that we've read is that he'd do it all over again. He'd do it right now. He'd do it all over again and he wants to continue to do it. He is right there with him and he'll show up with his heart wide open. He wants to keep doing life with him. Why? Why does Paul want to keep going through these sleepless nights? He talks about these nights when he just can't go to sleep because he's thinking so much about his love for his people and these hardships they're going through. 
It's because Paul knows that the spirit is leading and guiding the way. He's not putting trust in himself. He's not saying that I'm running the show. He's saying, listen up. If this community is going to thrive, if we're going to truly experience life together, we must learn to not only lean on, but acknowledge the Holy Spirit in all that we do. When we feel things are flourishing, but especially when we feel like we are at our wits end and failure is gonna happen. Now, Paul's not saying there's a fix all solution here. He's not telling the Corinthians or us that we've got to give it all up and move on. He's calling us to be even more present in tough conversations with our loved ones to open our hearts to the truth of our shared spirit who is the ultimate reconciler. Even when, and again, especially when we feel that reconciliation is impossible. We are called to remember that reconciliation is in fact the true nature of God. Now, At this point, you might be thinking, you might be saying to yourself, okay, sure, reconciliation, that sounds nice, but this whole idea sounds crazy. It's a pipe dream. And what you're saying is highly unrealistic. I hear you. However, friends, what if we consider that this concluding message, this concluding blessing is meant to shake us? What if Paul's intent was for us to read this and say, wait a minute, that's not possible. Maybe that worked for Paul, but we aren't Paul. We don't know what that's like. We, we live in much too much of a d- divisive world. We're far too divided. We can't do any of that. We can't get any work done like that. But perhaps Paul is articulating a vision that he knows we're going to respond to with confused looks and rolled eyes because he is inviting us to experience, to put faith in the Holy Spirit in a way that we never have before. Christ invites us to never stop striving for reconciliation, to be in community and share love with one another when it sounds crazy and when it feels impossible. Paul's blessing on the Corinthians, the conclusion of our letter, our scripture today is a part of Paul's realization that himself and the community cannot do this on their own that we cannot do this on our own in our present day, that when we feel we are at our weakest, our breaking points, again, our wits end, we experience Christ through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is active in creating fellowship, ushering us into this life together, even when we feel it's impossible. Paul's conclusion is not one of copy and paste solutions. He's saying that yes, relationships are hard, but here's the thing, relationships are worth it. The spirit gets us to places we have never dreamed of where we cannot go by ourselves. The ending of this letter is anything but the conclusion of our commitment to one another. The commitment of our shared life continues on and rests on our dependence on the spirit to reconcile and to heal us. So in fact, Paul isn't tying a neat bow on this letter. He's unraveling the truth of the Holy Spirit not offering a benediction that comes with freedom from responsibility or freedom from being a part of community, but he's doing something even better than tying a neat bow. 
He's inviting us to be one in the spirit so that we may be a people of love and reconciliation. Through the spirit, we are freely given the gift of grace, of healing, of restoration. He offers a blessing upon the people he's frustrated with and the people who are frustrated with him. Let me say that again. He offers a blessing upon the people he's frustrated with and the people who are frustrated with him. He does that so that they might be a community of examination and tough conversations, not out of their own personal thoughts, but out of love of Christ so that we might acknowledge God's commitment to us and likewise our accountability to God, so that we might be instruments of grace and love among one another and throughout the world. So what does this look like for us? What are the risks and the rewards here? Committing to love and live and living out of faith in the spirit is difficult. This sounds hard. I don't know about you, but this sounds hard. It requires us to be a people of reconciliation. Paul's not setting out to be a doormat for the Corinthians. He's not saying we won't struggle, but that we'll be together in community through it all. For Paul, loving people doesn't mean ignoring bad actions. Loving people is being fully present in those tough conversations when they need to happen. When we come to crossroads in our lives where reconciliation is required to move forward. The goal here is not that Paul would learn to love or the Corinthians or even that you and I would learn to love. The call that Christ places on our lives is to learn to love as a group, to learn to love as a body of Christ so that what we are about is love, not individualization, but together we are one. So that we may strive towards reconciliation and healing through the spirit. So Paul isn't tying a neat bow on this letter. To this day, we are still in the midst of working out our faith in good times and challenging times. If it feels imperfect and falls short sometimes, and I know we feel like that happens a lot, we trust the spirit and we move forward we move forward in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which is now and always with us all. Thanks be to God, amen.